What's up students, it's your sensei PGT. We're back again in class and today we're going to go over transferring mycelium on agar, what to look for, what to avoid, and why it's important. I'll be showing you guys here three plates that I'll be cleaning up. Uh, this one here's got a little bit of an odd growth in the top corner here and uh, we'll go ahead and transfer the clean culture away from that. Here's another plate that's got some bacterial growth onto it. You can see here there's some sliminess going on inside of this cup, uh, specifically more towards the, the top portion here, kind of circling around it, moving it around. You can kind of see where the, the slimes are. So I will show you guys how we're going to clean this up here. And the last plate here, We've got some pretty clean growth on this one. I don't see any signs of contamination on this one, but we'll go ahead and uh, do a transfer off of it anyway, just to uh, ensure that we have clean growth moving on to a new dish. So whether you're starting from spores to agar or clone tissues to agar, it's important to clean your plates up from any contamination before we introduce the cultures to grain or liquid culture. And when I say culture, I'm pretty much referring to the mycelium colony that I'm working with. The reason why agar is preferred is because it gives you a two-dimensional space to work on your mycelium. It's a lot easier to spot contamination on an agar dish than it is in a grain jar or liquid culture. There's really nowhere for the molds and bacteria to grow except for on the surface of the agar. To clean up your plates, we want to make transfers until we have a clean culture completely free of any contaminations. You're going to do this by cutting out a piece of the cleanest, healthiest looking mycelium on a plate and then putting it onto a new dish to colonize. With the clean culture from a colonized dish, we can now introduce the grain and have a much better chance at successfully colonizing the jar. It usually takes about one to three transfers to get a clean culture. Right, so here I'm selecting a part of the mycelium that's furthest away from the weird spot that I see at the top here. You don't really need a whole lot of mycelium. The smallest little speck is enough to create growth. Here I'm going back in. I'm going to be selecting parts of the mycelium that's on the outer edge. I'm also selecting them furthest away from the contamination source. I look for mycelium sectors on the outer edge that are stretching out the most compared to the rest. This is usually a sign of fast colonizing genetics that are healthy. Typically I'll flame sterilize as needed after one or two transfers. I'll go ahead and flame sterilize the blade again before making a new selection. If you want to be extra safe, you can flame sterilize before every transfer. Nobody's stopping you and everyone has their own ways of doing things. I just find that this works best for me as I'm not wasting butane in my torch all the time. All right, here we'll take a look at this. I'll open this back up. I'm going to be throwing away this cup anyway, so I'll, I'll give you guys a good look at this here. Now, there's some contamination growth towards the top there. We really want to transfer the mycelium away while it's still in a early stage of growth. We don't want that contamination to spread and take over the cup before we try and clean it up. So the earlier you can transfer mycelium out from contamination, the better you are. Here's a look at the transfers in the new dishes. I'll put these away to store at room temperature and let them colonize for another week or two. And I'll check up on them again to see if there's any contamination. If there's contamination, we'll repeat the process and clean it up again. And if not, then they'll be ready to use for inoculating grains. All right, now moving on to the next dish here. I'll show you guys how I go about this. I like to pre-open my lids to the agar cups as it makes it easier to not have to fiddle with them when you're carrying mycelium on your blade. So here's a quick tip there. Just pre-open your lids, get them ready. That way it'll be much easier to lift them up and make transfers. So go ahead and flame sterilize your blade. Make sure it's clean. Now we'll take a look at this. 
Uh, I kind of stabbed the agar there just to kind of cool the blade. I did it in a spot that's away from the slime. I probably, probably wouldn't recommend you guys to do the same thing. Uh, you probably want to cool it down in a clean plate. But anyways, uh, in here we're trying to look for a spot of mycelium that is not in the goopy mess. So I'll make a selection here that's on a clean looking area on the agar. And then we'll cut this out. Carefully lift this up. And we'll put this onto our new dish. You also want to minimize the amount of time that the dish is exposed to the open air. Obviously there's contamination in the air that can get into it. So when I make transfers, I try to drop it in the cup and close it as quickly as possible. Uh, it's all part of sterile techniques. Another thing that I'm also constantly trying to do is avoid keeping my hands over the cup. You never know when something on your hand or gloves might fall into the cup as you're working it. So I try to be mindful of where my hand is positioned at while I'm working inside the still air box. I try to make sure that it's as clean as possible. So go ahead and make another transfer here. Let's close it up. And we'll put those away. Here I'll give you guys a good look at the goopy dish here. As you can see, the mycelium is growing, but it's kind of surrounded by uh, some bacterial growth, some slime looking. Not good. So you want to make transfers out of it pretty early. I'll try to bring it closer to the camera so you guys can see. You can see the cuts that I've made are away from the areas that have the slime goop. It's kind of hard to tell. If this slime ends up showing up again on the, the new plates, then we'll, we'll have to clean them up again. But for now, uh, we've got our transfers out. Here we go. Alright. move on to the last cup here and when you're doing this we're, we're pretty much skipping the process of germinating spores and we're going straight to having the mycelium colonize the grains so it's going to speed up your jar colonization by a week or two compared to shooting spores directly into them here is uh, put your clean plates on top and then have your dishes that you're working with below it that way you're making transfers towards the clean and you don't have to overlap your hands over the clean plates and risk any contamination falling into it it's all part of a sterile technique all right I'll go ahead and pre-open the lids here and I'll actually go ahead and cool my blade in the clean plate of agar here that way we don't have to wait for the blade to cool and we can start working on our dish. All right, here's the uh, clean looking plate. Here, we'll take a look. You can see the mycelium is starting to form some rhizomorphic growth on the edges. You can see a couple sectors out of here. Here, I'll zoom in so you can see. Here's one of the sectors. There's another sector. There's another sector. And this part here is, uh, I can't tell if that's Tomentos mycelium, the cottony stuff. Uh, but ideally, when you're looking for fast colonizing mycelium, you want the rhizomorphic growths, the, the ones that look stringy. Those are the ones that are more aggressive on colonization. So we'll make another transfer on the edge here. Oh. 
And I'm just looking for another sector to uh, select some clean mycelium from. And we'll go from the side opposite here. pretty much it. Here I'll let you guys take a look at the cup again. Shout out to this month's patron supporters. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed the content, please hit the like button. Leave comments below and subscribe for more videos. If you want to discuss and learn more about mushrooms and mycology, come join us over on the Discord server. And if you want to show some support by becoming a golden student, you can check out my Patreon. All links will be in the description below. I'll see you guys in the next video.